Today we're going to talk about the SimLab machine for electromagnetic applications. So, as you may know, now in the new version, SimLab 2024, most Flux applications are now available through SimLab, which means you can do either magnetic transients, magnetic AC, electrostatic, and even uh, the new peak method through parasitic extraction and supply conductors. So, the good thing is that now you have access to great uh, sketcher capabilities and CAD connection, uh, as well as simpler workflows overall. So for all this type of application, we have very nice workflows and also an easy connection to multiphysics. So as you can see an example of uh, e-motor multiphysics here with the 2D permanent magnet machine, we can go from the sketcher to the transit magnetic and then to NVH and uh, eventually thermal. So, the question is now, how can we use SimLab to mesh all of our flux devices? Because uh, the mesh in some of these applications can be completely different. And so we'll see we have some dedicated meshing tools, uh, such as the one listed here. And we have also a lot of uh, ways to do X and extrusive mesh. And of course, there's a lot of mesh controls that can be useful as well in the long term. So let's, like, let's have a look at the dedicated meshing tools first. So one of the important thing when you have a mesh for flux is that the mesh needs to be matching, as we call it. So that means that it needs to be connected between each bodies. So in order to do that, there's a very simple thing. You can either uh, create the matching mesh when you mesh it. So straight away, the surface mesh will have this option in the flux solutions in order to, to make sure the mesh and the geometry is perfectly assembled. Uh, you can also combine the power solid if you've imported some power solid files uh, or converted to power solid they will be uh, imprinted together that way the mesh will be connected nicely uh, then you might wonder about the infinite box uh, as well for all of the 2d and 3d workflows we have a, a way to define this automatic uh, infinite box and it will be built around the device in 3d uh, it will respect the symmetry and periodicity and basically building the box will directly build the surrounding air and also mesh the, the bounding volume around it. Then for some of the applications, we'll have very specific tools. So in particular for motor application, we have something called the motor mesh, which can be quite useful. Uh, typically, it will ask you to define the, the mesh in the rotor side and the air gap side and stator side. And that way you can ensure the mesh will be periodic, very nice. And also this is a way to make sure the model will be remeshed automatically when you do DOE. So that means in the solution, you will define your CAD and you will define mesh settings. And these mesh settings can be the motor mesh inputs. Uh, it's also a way, as you can see at the end, you can extrude also this mesh. So you can also produce a 3D version of that mesh uh, if you need to. So let's have a look in SimLab of what we can uh, actually see and do. So first I, I caught up on one example of a motor mesh. So this is what it looks like at the end, but just to show you how we can define it. So here is the, the starting model we built from the, the simple templates. Uh, so let's go into our magnetic 2D workflow and we have the motor mesh here. I can select the type of elements, the mesh size approximately state of faces so let's click on these faces and actually you can do right click select identical faces so it's selecting all the same slot faces we have nine slots here so nine repetition mirror to make it periodic air gap region you can select the two faces here and there's a mesh size and then rotor faces this last one and we do have a mirror to make sure it's uh, symmetric and periodic here we can choose to extrude it or not, if we say no. Then we can see very quickly, so it's going to run in the corner here, and it's going to produce uh, our very symmetric and regular mesh for this 2D application. There we go. Then we have uh, something very specific also to meshing, which is a skin effect. And for that aspect, there are already a lot of tools in SimLab, but now in this version, we introduced this uh, skin effect tool. So very quickly, you can create internal layers of mesh in solid conductors to make sure to take into account the proximity losses and eddy currents uh, in, the, in the conductors. 
So you can see you can directly select some bodies, uh, compute the skin depth with the little tool, and make sure you mesh the inside uh, with nicer uh, or bigger elements and very thin layers on the outside. If we have a look at our busbar application here, we can see that I did a very coarse mesh on the surface, but then what I was able to do is use this skin effect mesh. So actually when you do that, you just need to have the surface mesh. You can run then this skin effect mesh tool. You can compute the skin depth using this little tool, and then you can apply it on all these bodies. And now that I meshed it, I can look at it with a, like a cross section and I can go inside of my modules and I can see that the layers of element that have been created automatically uh, on this. So now if I solve this at a certain frequency, you can see even the bondings here, uh, then it will be respecting the, the correct uh, skin depth for this frequency. There's also another uh, type of mesh, which is specific, uh, which we call the electrostatic mesh. So it's actually a bit close to what we have uh, in the, the legacy flux with the aided mesh, which means that you can define an average size, you can define which parts of the bodies are conductors. Uh, so that's the, the important bodies in the electrostatic application. Uh, but you also have things like proximity refinement. So whenever you have objects which are close, it will mesh it a bit nicer. And when you have sharp edges also, it will make sure the mesh is very small on these ed edges to make sure the, the value of the electric field on this area is uh, maintained nicely. So now let's have a look at some of the X and extrusive meshing methods that we have. So first of all, uh, any kind of 2D mesh, you can extrude it. Uh, you can actually produce the 3D body out of it. So using just the extrude method, you can basically select any kind of 2D mesh. So let's say I have a mesh from the motor mesh here. I select all the faces and I can extrude it and straight away gives me a very nice uh, 3D mesh. Okay, but also we could do that from the motor mesh if you need to. Uh, but apart from this, let's say manual method, there's a lot of very specific tools. So you can see here there are tools to follow like two and a half D uh, bodies. So anything which is like a yeah, a sort of extruded CAD with some additional features. It can mesh it nicely with X element to make it regular and very nice. You can also do like axisymmetric parts. So anything like induction heating, uh, this can help you to reproduce your mesh around the, this extrusion nicely. Uh, you have tools like pipe meshing. So pipe mesh, this could be something applied on cables, for example. So you can mesh the starting face and then it will uh, propagate and follow the, the shape of the CAD nicely. So that can be very powerful. And then we have a lot of tools uh, which are kind of automatically doing extrusion and X meshing. So it, this can be applied very nicely on a lot of bus bar applications typically. And I, I made a little, uh, little case where I tried to mesh uh, the motor rotor uh, with these different tools. So you can see, depending which option you take between auto X, auto extrude X, auto extrude wedge, auto sweep, there are, there are many, many tools uh, within the SimLab to help you uh, take some mesh, extrude it uh, in different types of elements, following different rules. And you can see the different type of results uh, in this case. So let's have a final look at other mesh controls. So obviously you can also control the mesh in your model uh, manually, which means you can define different type of mesh control as we can see on the right. So we can see like body mesh control to control the size on the overall body, uh, surface mesh control where you can even input like a number of layers to be respected, as you can see in the middle picture, or edge uh, control, which is where you can uh, control really the, the amount of elements along one edge in particular. So it can follow uh, features like fillet, holes, cylinders. Uh, you can even do the, the one which is shown in the, the control box here, the, the region. Uh, so that means you can just build a box or a cylinder or a sphere in which the mesh needs to be a certain size. So there's a many, many ways to, to control that mesh and you can really take advantage of it in any of the projects you have. Also, we have some periodic mesh capabilities. So whenever you do a periodic flux model like this uh, TFM machine, Clopole machine, uh, we can basically select one face from the right, for example, 
then click on this little blue cube uh, in the place and it will select automatically all the face from the right side and same thing on the left you click on one face you click on this little button and now you have the angular symmetry uh, which will be respected when you mesh it you can also do this on, on 2d uh, surface mesh uh, but i think it's very powerful on the, on the 3d part Then finally, maybe uh, one thing which is important when, whenever you do a mesh is about the quality. And there's been a new quality check that's been added. So for in SimLab, in, in general, you have a lot of uh, mesh quality tools to verify and to clean up the mesh that you may have. And now you even have a specific one for Flux, which means that it can uh, verify some of the, let's say, important things for a Flux mesh. And you will still have some cleanup methods to, to help you identify the bad elements and maybe fix them if you need to. So, as a conclusion, we can see that SimLab is probably now the best place to mesh your Flux device. Uh, we've seen there's a lot of great dedicated tools to accelerate the meshing definition. So anything which is specific to an application like skin effect or motor meshing, this is going to help quite a lot. There are also even tools to, to help you build uh, different parts of like motors, for example, building the sliding cylinders and things like that. So you can imagine we keep adding new stuff as well in, in the future release in order to make uh, the, the workflow easier and faster. We've seen there's a lot of powerful extrusive methods to reduce the mesh size. So in particular, whenever you have like extruded things like uh, motors, of course, but also Anything like cables, bus bars, uh, we, it will be very interesting to use these methods to follow different shapes. Uh, so some of the things we were not able to do in the past in the, the legacy flux. Now in SimLab, there's a lot of capabilities to go this way. And of course, we've seen there's many more tools to be used in any situation. So feel free to go around in SimLab and check all the different kind of meshing tools. Uh, you can even search for something in the help because in the end, uh, what's important is that there's a lot of information in the help, so don't hesitate to, to look at it and find exactly what type of mesh you might need for your applications.